Today, new evidence will be presented in what is expected to be the final January 6th committee hearing before the midterm elections. Political science professor Stephen Caliendo joins us this morning with a look ahead of the hearing and what we can expect. Good morning. Good to see you again. Good morning. It's good to see you, too. So here we go again, right? This hearing is expected to add even more video evidence uh, on former President Trump and his involvement leading up to the January 6th insurrection. Uh, we thought they were over earlier, but it appears the hits just keep on coming. Any word of what might be different today? Right, and, and, and also we don't know for sure that it's the last one. They're saying that it's probably the last one, but remember that we've had some surprise hearings pop up uh, earlier in the summer as well as new information has come available. The idea I think today is to, is to try to wrap things up and to make the direct connection between President Trump himself and, President, and, and people in President Trump's close orbit and the far right extremist groups that were responsible for organizing a lot of what happened on January 6th. And so those links uh, look to be prominent today. OK, so let's talk about what all this means. So there's supposedly some new documents from the thousands of pages the U.S. Secret Service recovered that are going to be presented in court today. So you have to ask this question. What impact is this going to have on the hearings and also on the November midterms? I don't, ex I'll answer your questions in reverse order. I don't expect it to have a huge impact on the midterms. People are pretty solidified. Um, uh, House member districts are drawn so carefully that I don't know that anything that happens here. There's some, maybe some Senate races uh, where the conversation picks up in a debate, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much on the midterms. In terms of um, wh why it matters sort of more historically, this is important to get on the record. Um, I, there have been, as you noted, a lot of documents that have surfaced since the last time we saw this committee operate, but there also have been some important witnesses they came to testify that weren't available before. I'm thinking about Mike Pompeo, Elaine Chow, uh, and Ginny Thomas uh, as well. And so um, whether we see video uh, clips from their testimony or whether we just hear from the panelists what they told the committee, um, I'm, I'm interested to hear, I'm interested to hear what, what they have to say as well. So you talk about the historical impact and why this needs to be put in the books uh, as part of history. But uh, what is really coming out of this when it comes to any any formal referrals that could be sent to the Justice Department, any charges that could be brought against the former president? Uh, is is that significant in this area or is it more historical perspective? I think it's both, but it would be more historical perspective because um, the Justice Department doesn't need a recommendation from this select committee to move forward with charges on the former president or people uh, near the president, the former president. So they can do that if, if they wish. Um, the, the other thing I think that's important to remember is that the Justice Department and uh, other state agencies are already moving forward. Uh, with images for the former president as well. So uh, this January 6th, uh, import, it's important, uh, but it's not the only thing that's important. Yeah, I know you'll be watching today. Stephen Caliendo, thank I you will. for joining us. As always, we want to remind our viewers, don't forget you can catch the hearings today at noon right here on Fox 32. You can also catch it on fox32chicago.com.